where you and I met through the vocational industry or into that sector that we so often cringe now. And yet we've turned around and become an RTO ourselves. The vocational industry is vastly different from when you and I first entered. And, and I think part of that challenge that we've found is that we've walked away from an industry that has actually, dare you use the word, tortured and limited industry and businesses. And I think part of that challenge is that we're still part of that industry, but it's making sure that we are making those huge changes. And what have you noticed most about when you first started within the sector too, because it did have such credibility? Um, the vocational education sector is one that I actually am extremely proud of. Um, I mean, both Ellen and David have heard this story before, but um, I actually was there when it started. I wrote the original qualification in the vocational education sector when it was about valuing people and delivering capability for business so that we could drive sustainable businesses, businesses that could survive, people that had value, they had credibility, they had professionalism, they were proud of their qualifications. And it, was a, it, it wasn't a time that was extremely innovative. It was in the ageing space. It was the first time ever that people who'd never been professionalised were, were given the opportunity to actually you know, have a piece of paper that said, I've got this ability to do something. Um, what's changed over the years is that it's become devalued because it's become about money and about funding and about what I can get out of the system and it's been a self gratuitous system that's been established. Um, I don't like it. Uh, I certainly have been challenged with it over the last three or four years in particular um, where I think, one, again, it goes back to what David said, the focus has, has been lost, exactly what he said, where he's been challenged time and time again where he's gone out and he's needed people to be trained I mean, let's face it, you can train a monkey to jump through a hoop. Do you want capability? Yes, you want people to be able to do what you need them to do to run your business. That's why vocational education was set up. It was also set up to establish a lifelong learning pathway for people so that we could encourage them to keep learning and keep wanting to learn, um, keep wanting to drive businesses and be the future leaders of businesses. Do I think that's gone? Yes, I do. Do I think it's been devalued? Yes, I do. Do I think we've lost it? Most definitely. So that's, you know, Elle and I met over a, at an RTO, Cleaning Out a Kitchen, uh, which was quite amazing. We were destined to meet, I think, and what the value that we bring to it is that, one, we acknowledged that it wasn't working, two, that it wasn't connecting to business, and three, it needed to change. The only way we could change it was to challenge it. Um, so we did say we walked away from the sector and then we turned around and became one. And what we want to do is, is bring respect back to it. We want to professionalise the unprofessionalised. We want to make sure that they're about driving outcomes for a business, making sure that businesses are profitable, making sure that they can employ youth, making sure that they develop leaders, that people aren't transactionalised. It's all the things we're supposed to have been there for that we're not there for anymore. Um, and I think that in that sense, we've had to prove that things can be done very differently. Um, and that to do that, we can still with we still work within a framework, but do what we do, you know, we do best. Um, so I guess you know, in, in that sense, what do you think your value is to the business, David? What do you bring to us? Why why is your position so so important? I think it's more just simplicity. Just make things simple. I think there's yeah. way too much stuff out there that's too complicated. Mm -hmm. um, considering that there's a large majority of our whole population that education level is not that great. Mm -hmm. And we keep bringing in systems that are all designed and everything for graduate ed engineers, like extremely highly educated people. And yet we're missing out the, the group of people that it's actually the training's intended for. Mm -hmm. So I think it's keep, keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. And when I say simple, it needs to be simple, simple. Not five pages is not simple. One page is simple. Too many words on that page is not simple pictures are simple. Mm. So I think it's just bringing that um, into the organisation and being able to pass that then on into what we deliver. I think then people reading that just go, oh yeah, it all makes sense. Look, in terms of that, 
in terms in Australia of you know, web-based learning. We've certainly got to use technology, and Australia is, is way behind the eight ball in technology, particularly in learning, but in, in, in supporting businesses. Technology should enable people, not replace them. It's about enabling them to make businesses grow, do different things, be innovative, be creative, be entrepreneurial, all of those sorts of things. In essence, what's not happening, though, is we've turned web-based learning and building to being moving words across a screen rather than interpreting them and giving them to people in a different, inclusive way of, of learning. Um, and I think for Elle, that's been one of her greatest values coming from a perspective of disability and community services where the people that she's worked with haven't had that opportunity. So Elle, what's, what's that that you bring? I think it's really looking at how do you actually make learning enjoyable, fun, to actually make people want to be lifelong learners, no matter what age they are, what their current capabilities are, but to be one of being able to learn and with that being empowered through knowledge and respected. And the use of technology is absolutely amazing at how it can help people develop those skills in a way that they themselves can't even believe that they're learning. Mm. We've had to go to market with uh, a business that's so neoteric, so new, so challenging to business, um, you know, to turn up to a business and say, we can, we can actually improve our delivery so much so by doing something different ourselves that we can deliver up to 50% reductions in costs, operational costs. We can convert it to being an investment. So in other words, something you traditionally see on your balance sheet or your profit and loss as an expense that you get no control over, somebody else sets the price, you pay the price out. We've been able to convert that to something completely different. Our challenges have been huge. Um, Elle, what's, what do you think some of our challenges have been to do what we're doing and make it successful? The fact that something's so simple, people can't believe and think, well, why hasn't it been done before? Well, it's coming back down to pushing those traditional boundaries and really making people think about simplicity, as David so rightly said earlier, is that how can this be true? Because we've had to always do it this way. Well, no, you don't have to. And I think that's been one of those challenges that sometimes you think, this is too good to be true. But when you're coming from an entirely different perspective and a different approach, it is true. Have we pushed the boundaries to the point where we would say that we are pioneering to the point where that's the flat horizon, the flat earth, and we're now discovering that it's round? Isn't that where we're at? Isn't that what we're saying now? I would think it's only short term. <laughs> In another five years, like everything else, there'll be something there'll be something else where someone else will go or we will develop more and go, oh, actually we started off like well like well in front. Um, and then you view things. Until something physically changes, um, most people don't get it. So once they see it in the changed format then they can go, okay, well, we can actually look at this again from a new starting point. So I think all we've done is from a starting point, we're definitely well ahead. Um, but then as everybody catches up with what we're doing, um, it's a new starting point. So I think it gets looked at again. So, so I would say short term, absolutely. So what um, makes us different? Why are we different in that perspective? We have got a point of difference that makes us different in that space. Yeah, I think, I think well, it's probably two things. One, we kept it simple and one, we customer focused. Yeah. And they're probably the two things that um, are the biggest difference. And what keeps changing? The customer. The customer and what their needs are keeps oh, changing. Oh, the needs of the customer. Yeah, the yeah. needs of the customer. So in terms of what will make us continue to be successful, if we look at, you know, we're not just a one-off wonder. What makes us completely different is the fact that we're not um, satisfied with sitting here we're not satisfied with sitting at this table. We're not satisfied with having this conversation. Our mind is already thinking, what's next? What, what do we need to improve? We've got a focus of what truly is continual improvement. Continual improvement isn't fixing something that's broken. What is it? What is, what is continual improvement? Continual improvement is anticipating what's going to be next. Exactly. 
and we're sitting here, we're anticipating. Look, I can give you a, a perfect example because we do play in the vocational education space. You know, there's many forums that we have that are conversations about, um, you know, the minimum entry requirement, which is, you know, training and assessment certificate. I must say that we started our business going, oh, yes, we, we have to have that tick box. We have to put that on scope and make sure that we have that available, but in a wonderful way. And then all of a sudden we sat back and went, oh, we've missed something. We've done it ourselves. We've fallen back into that trap. So we actually have to say, well, let's go to higher. What's, what's a point of excellence that we want to reach? It's about continually being innovative and continually seeking continual improvement, not reacting to something that's gone wrong. Is that what makes us different? Yeah, it's about what people want, not what they've said is not working. Correct. So let's talk, let's talk about an ageing customer. And that is one of our focuses in Australia. Some are they're going to be closer there than others. Correct, we are. <laughs> Let's face it, we're doing it because we're eventually going to get there ourselves, or some of us are already there. But in terms of that, what have we actually thought about first before we started even designing our processes around it? What was our, what was our, our, our thought process? It's actually talking to the customer, determining what or asking them what is it they want. 